So today we're going to be talking about Chopin. You can hear him playing in the background and I'll start talking about him soon. This is the first intro, so it's terrible, but there it is. So welcome to today's installment of 10 Minute Histories. Today we're going to be talking about Frédéric Chopin. So a classical composer of the Romantic era. And uh, so Chopin was born in 1810 and he died 1849. So only reached, died before he got 39 years old. And like I mentioned, he was a Polish composer and a virtuoso pianist. And he wrote works primarily for solo piano and he grew up in Warsaw. And he was a child prodigy, so he was already as a young child uh, labeled a musical genius, already from age eight apparently. He was labeled in, in publications and, and uh, newspapers as a musical genius, so similar to Mozart, the kind of wunderkind. And um, he left Poland at age 20, and this was a month before the revolutionary uh, Polish uprisings of the, of the 18, 1830s. And he was actually never to return to Poland again, and his music actually features a lot of Polish elements. But um, strangely enough, he never re uh, returned to Poland. He spent um, the rest of his life in Paris and London mostly. And yeah, so just worth mentioning is women had a large role in his life, and especially female singers. And um, back in the day, in his time, the singers were actually the famous ones and who were really the ones who were making a lot of money. And uh, the composers were kind of second to the divas and today you, we only know about these singers and the only reason you'll actually read something about these singers is when they actually mention Chopin so it's just interesting that back then you knew the composer because of the singer and now you know the singer because of the composer and just maybe a letter or something they wrote so uh, just very interesting to see that kind of shift so, um, piano makers during Chopin's time were inspired by the likes of Beethoven to really uh, improve the piano and to innovate on it a lot. So, for instance, some of the innovations that occurred during this time is the piano was made stronger. Wooden frames were replaced with steel frames and the piano was made a more reson resonant instrument but also more affordable to the middle classes and so forth. So. Uh, piano makers really uh, were developing the piano at this stage. It really helped composers such as Chopin and Liszt to really, you know, experiment with the piano. And Chopin was um, himself a shy and a rather private man. Apparently, he was rather awkward and apparently very shy. But he was able to draw an intense singing um, quality from the piano. And he was inspired by obviously the keyboard, but, uh, but apparently the female voice was one of the most inspiring things for him. And his music reflects this in its song-like quality, and it really has a very sing singing-like quality in the music. Uh, almost there's like a, here a beautiful phrase, an organic echo of a human voice inside his piano music. And he was inspired by the bel canto style of opera which was uh, seen in the works of Bellini, Donizetti, Rossini and it was a energetic, melodic, beautiful style of singing. Bel canto literally translates to beautiful singing and uh, this really had a huge influence on Chopin. And uh, strangely enough his music isn't as well known in popular culture as for instance you know some of Mozart's and Beethoven's and Bach's music is but uh, I think his best known piece is probably the funeral march, bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -bum, which everybody has heard at least once or twice. And female singers really had a huge influence on him and in his music. We'll mention a lot about them later, and a lot of these figures uh, were some of the leading musical figures in, in, um, of the time. For instance, Jenny Lind is just one example, but we'll speak a bit more about this further. But just something you can't not mention about Chopin is this song-like quality inside his, um, his piano com compositions, really a very delicate singing quality. So um, we mentioned that Chopin left Poland at age 20 and he never returned, so by age 21 he had settled in Paris and uh, after this time he actually gave only around 80 public performances, which isn't a lot. So um, 
it's pretty interesting that he gave only around 80 public performances and a lot of his public performances were uh, done in salons and salon music is something that is uh, came up uh, a lot in the romantic period and it was music in a small small environment basically it was written works written for solo piano in the romantic style and it was usually short very virtuosic pieces but it was intimate pieces played in in in, in a room basically and he's one of the few composers I was Chopin was one of the few composers I were able um, that was able to survive by selling his music, so by publishing and by teaching, and he apparently charged enormous, enormously high fees for his teaching, and people were willing uh, to play to pay pay the fees. So it was of, often the aristocratic uh, members of this of society, and in 1835 he gained French citizenship and um, d during this time he met George Sand that was during his time in Paris and this George Sand is a figure that needs a video of her own basically but it's a female so George Sand was a female who um, she was a public figure but she was r really one of a kind she would smoke cigars in public which was a big no-no back then she sh and she would wear men's clothing and she was just a you know a very flamboyant uh, over the top figure and he actually had a, a a long standing relationship with her as well as numerous other speculated relationships before and after this and um all of chopin's music and all of his compositions feature the piano and i can find i have a lot of sympathy with this that all his music features at the piano because me myself if i had to write music i wouldn't be able to not use the guitar the instrument that i play as uh, you know a very important instrument in any composition so i find a lot of uh, sentiments with the fact that he always uh, composed with the piano basically in mind and that all of his compositions do feature the piano and just worth mentioning the fact that all these women had such a large influence on him I think I can say the same because like from my out outlook I work at two schools and teach practical music there and the one is a boys school and the other one is a mixed school and just like in general a female a girl always has a lot more delicate way of playing and a lot sensitive a lot more sensitive I guess way of playing where guys tend to just like bang 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 through a piece girls tend to really interpret the music and really I I think put more emotion into the music so I kind of see where his inspiration from the female voice came from and you know the female voice I think is one of the most organic instruments you know it's everyone's born with the voice it's something you communicate with every day it's a very intense instrument really yeah so I kind of went off there on my own story but yeah so his music is very technically demanding sometimes you know if you had to play it at the tempo he wants it to it's basically impossible and later uh, we'll see people like Liszt would perform his music who was a virtuoso pianist and maybe you know this music was intended for people like this to play and not just the average Joe so his own public performances were noted for subtle nuances and sensitivities. So very subtle nuances and very, very sensitive way of playing. And apparently as a kid he would um, blow out candles, the lights, and he would play in the dark to really feel the music and to really uh, feel that emotion. And apparently at some of the salons he would also request that the lights uh, be dimmed or even uh, blown out the candles basically remember this was before electricity so it was everything was candles but yeah so requested that it be dark and Chopin invented the concept of the instrumental ballet and a ballet is like a medieval French term for like a, a song that's like telling a story so the instrumental ballet is basically just like music telling a story and but he invented this and he's credited for the for its first use and this was or the first use of the term and it was used the instrumental ballet was used after this quite quite often sorry I started there a bit it was the first time I really had a big stutter in one of these videos but I'm gonna leave it in 
and um, he was influenced by Polish folk music, although its authenticity and its real, you know, originality, the, um, it's it's more urbanized Polish music, not really the folk folk music from Poland. As you can understand, he left at such an early age, but he cited as um, he cited Bach, Mozart, um, and Schubert as uh, forming his musical out outlook so according to him Bach Mozart Schubert so you know the usual the usual suspects and he really fitted the romantic idiom because of his love life you know people like George Sand all these opera singers all these vocalists these female vocalists so his love life really fitted the, the romantic image he, this kind of association that was very indirect and not really you know uh, but he was associated with in insurrection very indirectly but yes and that also fitted the romantic idiom very well as well as his early death so you can almost see like he's one of those quintessential romantic era figures and yeah and so um chopin wrote over 230 surviving works and um so some of his childhood compositions were actually lost so like we mentioned by by age eight, he was already regarded as a musical genius. So by that time, he was already composing. But some of his childhood music was actually lost, and he's credited for developing the nocturne genre to a deeper level, to a deeper level of sophistication. So the nocturne genre, he developed to a greater level of sophistication. And me personally, like Benjamin Britten, wrote a nocturne for the guitar, which is amazing. It's a very, it's a cool style of music, very uh, moving. I reckon is the word rather than cool. Sorry for that one. And um, his piano sonata number two in B flat, like we mentioned, it's Opus 35, and it's popularly known as the Funeral March. And this was played at the funerals of John F. Kennedy, Margaret Thatcher, um, Sir Winston Churchill, and it was actually played at his own funeral as as well. And just mentioning his funeral, his body. Uh, was buried but his heart was sent back to Poland which is pretty cool to me so um, just something worth mentioning as well when mentioning him is Liszt because he was actually friends with Liszt but some say it was kind of a love-hate relationship um, Liszt apparently said about Chopin that uh, the most vigorous applause seemed not to suffice to our enthusiasm in the presence of this talented musician. So this is apparently what Liszt said about Chopin, and Liszt himself was an amazing musician, amazing uh, performer, and really the, the, a virtuoso amongst virtuosos. And to be honest, um, it seems, I see my, it's starting to flash. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm very fast running out of recording space, it seems. But uh, I deleted a few things, so I've got room again. So I think I'll, I'll just carry on where I left off. So yeah, list basically amazing as well. Like women used to faint in in his presence when he would give uh, performances and when he would play the piano. Like women would literally faint. And Liszt and Chopin gave seven joint performances. And apparently now this is where the love-hate relationship comes into play, is that apparently Chopin was jealous of Liszt's uh, skills and his success. So like we mentioned, Liszt was really a virtuoso amongst virtuosos and apparently Chopin was pretty jealous of his uh, skills on the piano as well as the success he came he gained because of this and his kind of uh, how he marketed himself to be like this great figure at least really you know this kind of romantic uh, beyond human like figure and um, Chopin's opus 10 etudes were dedicated to Liszt and apparently uh, Chopin said um, I wish well, Chopin said this about Liszt playing his studies, that I, I would like to rob him of the way he plays my studies. So apparently Chopin wanted to rob Liszt of the way he plays his studies, which you can only presume is he played them extremely well and, you know, really, uh, really, you know, played them amazingly, I guess. Sorry for choking on my words. What I wanted to say was Afrikaans word, which is my home language, where you would say, you know, you really put which means you put ears on them but that doesn't really ring the same in English but anyways let me continue and apparently Liszt embellished 
one of Chopin's noc nocturnes, and apparently Chopin said about this that uh, uh, he should play it as it's written or he shouldn't play it at all. And uh, apparently Liszt's mistress was Marie de Agoult, and apparently she had an obsession with Chopin, so this maybe was another reason why there was a, a kind of a drift between the two. And apparently Chopin was uh, a bit skeptical of Liszt's relationship with Georges Sand because obviously Chopin and Liszt stayed like a few blocks from each other, so they had a lot to do with each other. And um, yeah, so just to end off basically, uh, Chopin's friends at his request, played uh, music at his funeral bed. And again, this was piano and voice. It wasn't his own compositions. It was specifically the female voice he wanted to hear. And his music often includes difficult fingerings, fingerings and uses the entire range of the piano and uses passages in double octaves and contrasting rhythms between both hands. So playing three in this hand, four in this hand. And uh, there are popular names for some of his works, like ones he didn't really attribute to them to it himself, such as the Funeral March and the Dog Waltz. Apparently, the Dog Waltz apparently was written for George Sand. Apparently, had a dog that um, Chopin was very fond of playing with. And um, yeah, so something about his music—it's something that's really meant to be played on the piano. You can't really play it on like I've I've seen some some of Chopin's music transcribed for the guitar and it doesn't work it doesn't have the same quality the same emotion to it so you can really see how the piano and even the female voice and the song-like quality of the female voice really comes into into um, his compositions and it's not something you can do on any other instrument yeah so I think I'll end off with that maybe I'll mention a bit about some of the female figures in his life because there is a massive amount of them and there's this documentary Chopin um, I'll yeah I'll do another small like 30 second bit where I just mentioned that documentary but it's amazing it focuses on his life in regard to the woman in his life and it's very it's worth watching definitely so I'll just mention a few of those ladies and then yeah we'll call it a day there cool yeah so I was gonna talk a bit about the woman but damn there's too many just go watch a documentary the woman behind the music, Chopin, the woman behind the music. So thanks for watching. That was 10 Minute Histories on Chopin. I did a little intro there in the beginning. It's pretty terrible, but it's my first time experimenting with, with it. So please be, be, be graceful. And yeah, we'll catch up again. That was 10 Minute History on Chopin, which turned out to be like 17, 18 minutes again. But yeah, catch up again next time.